Hello viewers, here is a 48 inch Montgomery Ward's ceiling fan. This is a fan that I got a long time ago and there is quite a backstory behind this which I don't think I've ever told on video before so I'm going to tell it today and then we'll show the fan in operation. I bought this fan off eBay, I want to say probably two years ago now, and the person that was selling it had another one available, which was uh, that one over there. These two fans were original to a house that they were renovating, and they were both in the, in the house, and so I asked the seller if they would give me a deal if I bought both of them. They cooperated, which is a hit and miss when it comes to eBay. But they were nice, they cooperated, they gave me a pretty good deal. And so I bought both of the fans. This fan was in very good condition. Fully functional, nothing wrong with it. This fan, however, not so much. One of the blades was warped. And I, I think I have a video of this when it had the warped blade on it. Anyways, it didn't shake necessarily that bad, but it just didn't move air correctly so it wasn't very usable I made several attempts to unwarp the blade it was not an exhaustive attempt but nothing worked so I kinda of figured I'm just gonna to have to get a new blade set which I didn't really expect to happen realistically and a few months after that I was cruising through the eBay again and a set of the blades happened to show up. I wasn't even really looking for them. But they showed up and so I immediately bought them. The price was reasonable. And I figured exactly how this came about, but after I bought the blades, I wrote to the seller and asked if they had the rest of the fan. And they said that they did. And so I asked if they'd be willing to sell uh, the rest of the fan. And they agreed to do so. So I was able to work out another deal with that seller uh, to get both the blades and the motor that there oops right there is the old, uh, the motor that came from that auction and these are the blades that came from that auction now this motor that came from that auction is not in the greatest of conditions and it's largely because of the shipping the shipping was a freak show I wish I had done a video on that Maybe I did, I don't remember. Anyways, um, so there was that. And then the blades from that auction, which are here, are in absolutely perfect condition. The brass is still shiny. The, the finish is still shiny. And no warping. It, it was a beautiful set of blades. So between the two auctions, I was able to come up with one good fan. Now, of course, this one could just be repainted. And that motor would be good. And... I'll have to figure out some way to unwarp those other blades or just that one blade from the other set because having a, a dual install of these somewhere would be pretty cool um, but anyways there's more to the story because the second auctions seller in conversation about buying the motor along with the blades mentioned that they had several of these fans in their house and were going to be uh, removing them in the spring and would, would offer to sell those to me as well. And so I said absolutely because these are some of my favorite kind of ceiling fans. So, and they're very hard to come by in this area. So I w was uh, very happy with that offer and I absolutely accepted it. And uh, time goes by, I think it was the spring that had said they were going to do that. And it kind of slipped my mind. Spring came and went and they never reached out. So, I'm not sure what became of that. Maybe someday I'll reach out to them again, I don't know. They probably just forgot. If I forgot and I was interested in them, they're not that interested in them, then they probably forgot too. But, anyways, that was kind of a bummer. But regardless, I have two uh, perfectly good working instances here, and then one that needs a little bit of help. So today, we'll just show this one. This is the working one. I have it connected to a, uh, what is it? a Hampton Bay's remote. This is a three-speed remote. 
and it actually does pretty well. It's got a reasonable low speed, which I'm going to start it off on right now. It's not quite as slow as I'd like it to be, but it's not bad for a, a preset three-speed remote. And the blades are getting cut off from the view of the camera. Let me see if I can move this back a little bit. There we go, that works. Oh, now that clip fan is in the way. I'll put this clip fan somewhere else for the video. that light on? I think it is. Yeah. Leave that light off for now. So here it is on the low speed. This is the low from the remote. And it's it's not a bad low. It, it's a little, little fast. But uh, it is functional. It moves some air. And did I bring down that new air flow tester? No, oh, I didn't. Dang. Well, I'll just use this old one because solar fans seem to break these things in anyway. Very subtle breeze. But it's there, and you can certainly feel it. It's very quiet. Of course, this is a... I'm fairly certain this remote is a capacitive control, so... This should be relatively quiet. does have a little bit of a sway to it. And this could fare to be repainted too, but it's not bad. So the blades are in pretty good clock. Decent pitch on this too. I'd say it's probably at least 13 degrees. 12 or 13 perhaps. Okay. Now we'll go up to medium. Get that back in the frame here. Remote. Oh, for heaven's sakes, I gotta clean up in here. This is awful. Where'd it go? Ah, here it is. Okay, medium. It's got a little bit of motor hum on medium. Definitely more wobble. It's already moving quite a bit of air. This doesn't work that well for someone fans. That's, that's pretty decent airflow. Of course, there's so much stuff in here. The air doesn't really get above the fan because of all the other fans and miscellaneous stuff that's in here. So if this was in a different environment where it had more uh, freedom to get air over the blades, it would probably move a lot more air. But I think it's, for the speed of the blades, I think it's a little bit um, under what I would expect. But it's, it's definitely holding its own, for sure. This is probably moving about as much air as most modern fans do on high.
And by some miracle, the bearings are actually pretty decent in this fan. I seem to have a very difficult time finding fans with good bearings. Okay, now we'll go to high. That's still in the frame? Yes, it is. Okay, and high speed. Now, this really whips on high speed. This is moving some serious air. I would say this is probably into the range of, you know, a K55 stack motor fan. Yeah, that's, that's really strong. And it's going fast too, it's, let's see here, you can probably get a good idea of the RPMs if it wasn't so blurry. There you go. I would say it's at least 250 RPMs, if not more. That's, that's definitely really fast. See the recirculation is even moving that around. I think in autofocus cameras, I wish this thing had manual focus. This is a really strong fan. I'm not holding this near the fan. The fan's two or three feet above it. This fan is no joke. Alright, I'm going to cut it off now. And I don't think this has reverse. Uh, if unless it's hidden under the canopy, it doesn't have it. But I don't think I'm going to show it anyways because this is going to take too long. And I'm not going to show the spin down either because that's that takes too long too. So anyways, that's the uh, Evergo Montgomery Ward's 48 inch cast aluminum spinner and the story behind it and the acquisition of the other two. This probably would have come with a swag kit originally because it's got the little thing there for the swag kit. 
that one came with the original swag. That's it right there. I have the controller box somewhere in that pile of stuff over there. So anyways, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching.